Hello darlings, welcome to my channel. I am Cassandra George Sturgis. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sock doll. Her name is Josephine. Thank you so much for watching. The first thing you're going to do is buy a pair of socks to match whatever skin color of the skin color of your preference and you're going to download the pattern for this sock doll Josephine and you're going to trace the pattern onto the socks but please pay, pay close attention to the video because it's not I don't know I don't think it's intuitive so as you can see here you only need one pair of socks to make the entire doll but um, it's kind of a unique way that I put it together in order for you to be able to completely make the doll so as you can see here I am placing the legs under the heel of the sock and I'm tracing it on to the bottom of the sock what would be the bottom of the sock now as I said in previous videos I strongly suggest using a jelly roll pen because they do not um, bleed to the other side of the fabric and they leave very clear lines now I know in past videos I always say I only trust my own hands well I strongly suggest that you use a sewing machine for this project because the sewing machine um, the I don't know how do you say this but the yeah like when you sew the thread the stitches oh that's the word the stitches are very tight and because the sock is so stretchy and soft you're definitely going to you need a sewing machine I of course I've sewn like at least two of them by hand trying to get the pattern right and I could always see the stitches when I tried to stuff it and it just didn't look good so um, this so you're going to get your sewing machine and you're going to trace your markings on the um, on the sock as you can see in the video right above the hill you're going to get the part of the pattern that is called the waist and you're going to trace that right above the heel and this is going to um, be the doll's bottom and um, we, you'll, you'll see later and then at the top of the sock as you can see I am tracing the arms now I really guys I tried this pattern so many times and this is the only way that I could do this make this doll only using a single pair of socks so I'm tracing the arms um, on the top part of the of the sock and maybe you'll use a, a longer sock but I definitely wouldn't recommend a shorter sock because I could barely sew around the edges of her mitten hand if you notice on the pattern I'm not sure if I actually was able to accentuate this part but in the area that's supposed to be the doll's wrist I am taking the jelly roll pan on the outside in a little bit more just to yeah see right around the the mitten and right on the inside where the where the wrist would be I take it in a little bit to give it a little bit more definition now for the second heel on the other sock we are going to prepare it to be the doll's bosom and I'm sorry my camera blew off for a minute so you can see um, with the pattern it's kind of shaped like an hourglass the top portion is going to be the doll's lower face and the bottom portion is going to be the cleavage area now if I was going to make this uh, sock doll again I would make the neck longer because it, it would really look better with a little bit more space but this was like my <laughs> my fourth attempt and I just wanted to get the tutorial started and I thought let me go ahead and do the sock doll tutorial and stop trying to perfect this but I would actually bring it down just a little bit more so as you see I I am now tracing the ears on the little space at the bottom be very careful and um, very what's the word I want to say judicious with your space because you can run out of space really quickly with this project and my goal for myself was can I 
make a sock doll using a single pair of socks and I thought I was able to do it and be um, pleased with the way the doll turned out. So I sewed around the pattern off camera and now I'm cutting out the pattern and um, <laughs> be very careful. Those are my good scissors that I blew because I, I, I cut something with a sticky back. Man, I'm so mad at myself for that. But those scissors are really expensive. But basically, you want to use good scissors because socks are very soft and very, um, yeah, stretchy. And so, and leave yourself a little space because when it stretches, you don't want the edges to rip apart. As I've said in previous videos, I really prefer a two-way stretch, but a sock is designed to fit your foot so you know it is going to stretch. So this material is really, really stretchy and you have to be very careful with it. And I just enjoyed the challenge, even though it's not my favorite fabric, or, but I really enjoyed, you know, doing something new. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you when you're cutting out your fabric, well, I'm sorry, when you're cutting out the pattern for your sock doll, be very, very careful. Even when you are placing the wire on the inside and when you're stuffing it because it would easily um, lose its shape. So as you see in the video, I am cutting around the um, cleavage and the lower jaw area and then I am going to cut it in half. Guys, I cannot wait to tell you Josephine's story. This doll was so talkative. She made me laugh so hard when I was making her. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if I should tell you in this video or just make a separate, you know what, no. I just thought of it. I'm going to make a separate video and tell you her entire story about, you know, why she's, um, even though she's, you know, unattractive, she was able to marry the most handsome guy in her high school and how all the other girls were very envious of her how he anyway it's a long story I have I wrote it out I need to type it and I cannot wait to share it because Josephine is a hot mess so as you see in the video I am turning the sock on the um, good side and preparing to uh, create a wire armature to place inside of the sock and then we are going to stuff it now I really wish I had stuffed this sock a lot better what I normally do is I like to take felt a foam like a foam uh, what is it like the flat foam yes and I like to cut it in strips and wrap it around my wire before I put it inside of my dolls but I did do it for this project because the truth is I didn't know it was going to work the whole sock thing and I also wish I had made the wire armature a lot longer. Like it was too short. So in the video, I did make the, the W shape and I turned it into the um, shape for the human body. But I ended up just pushing it down to make it, to extend the legs and adding a, an additional piece to create the sock doll's head. So um, anyway, yeah, so make your wire armature a little bit longer. The wire that I'm using for this sock doll, I bought it from the dollar store and um, yes, yeah, so, so it, obviously it was a dollar and it's very soft, it's floral wire, oh my god, you don't even, I mean, see how I'm bending it? It's like bending a piece of like wire to put on a, a loaf of bread, you know, it's, oh my god, I just love the way it feels, but the downside is the doll is like when you pick her up she's flopping over you know what I mean <laughs> it's her, she doesn't hold her poses as nice or as firm as I would like but you have to be very careful with this doll but this wire oh my god and because the sock is such a soft uh, fabric I think it's a perfect combination make sure you put a nice size loop at the bottom of the wire to um, for the feet to, and um, I didn't I don't think I've actually made the bottom big enough either for the feet but just for future reference and you know I'm kind of like one of the things I say a lot when you're making fabric dolls you have to be very comfortable with 
I don't know if the word is ambiguity. I think it's ambiguity. You have to be comfortable with things not being perfect. So I decided to stop, you know, I, I decided to stop with my own expectations of how this doll was supposed to turn out like previous dolls. And I just decided to give in to the, the uh, stretchiness and the softness of the fabric and let her be who she wanted to be. As you can see, I am forming the arms here with the one piece of wire, but I ended up just making it a part of the body because um, it just wasn't long enough. And so I put a separate piece of wire inside of the arms and you will see what I did in the next video. However, ideally, this is how it typically works when I use enough wire. Make sure you twist the wire because it gives it more strength. And when you bend it, it you know the wire will remain, um, it won't break. So now we are going to prepare to begin stuffing the doll's legs. I highly suggest that you use Morning Glory or Mountain Mist um, fiber seal because it is very dense and it's oh it's nice and strong now be very careful when you're stuffing because the sock fabric is so stretchy oh my goodness i'm so not used to using something so stretchy so you want to be very careful and use your hands to shape the fiber feel so you see i'm kind of like it looks like i'm massaging it i am shaping it and be very very careful and even though I sped this video up I was super careful um, while stuffing this doll completely this sock doll because it's so easy for her to get out of shape and it's really hard to um, be able to get her back into shape again it's like I said this video is like the fourth <laughs> this is my fourth try I know there is a doll inside of you who is dying to come to life, but only you can breathe life into her. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in part two on how to make Josephine the sock doll.